G'day, Tim Bartomote here, agronomist with local land services in Dubbo. And today we're gonna to talk about soil testing and how to get it done in your patch. Well, I like to think about it like going to the doctors. We need to do general checkups every now and then to make sure that our bodies or, or our soil are in good nick. We also need to understand what physical, chemical constraints there might be, just like we might have a problem with our bodies. We need to understand what problems we might have with our soil and how they might limit our production. The other thing is we need to help inform our decision making by understanding what nutrients are available, what nutrients our crops need, and so adequately supply that with fertiliser going forward in the season. It's important that we come up with a plan on how we're going to test the soil in our paddocks, how we're going to take samples and make sure that we do it well. Because just like the old saying goes, garbage in, garbage out, so if we have bad data coming in, we're going to get bad results coming out in our soil test results and therefore make bad decisions potentially with poor information. The first thing to do to plan where to take soil samples from is to create a transect and that's just an imaginary line you could draw between your soil sample sites and these transects can be set up in different ways and a few options are just a straight line across diagonally across your paddock. You could use a zigzag method or you can even create a grid across your entire paddock to make sure you're not missing any spots. Understanding that our paddocks aren't uniform, they're quite variable. You might have high spots, low spots, even different soil types on a paddock. So we need to understand that so we're not taking our samples from places that are very different from each other. So we need to understand what parts of our paddock are probably best to be avoided so that they don't influence our soil tests too much. So some of the things that we need to avoid are old fence lines, stock camps, areas surrounding trees. And this is so that we don't heavily influence our soil tests with outliers and so have a, a bad understanding of what's actually going on underneath. So often I get the questions, how many samples should I be taking? And so I like to suggest at least 30 if not 40 samples and so this gives you a good average it accounts for some of the variability which you can't avoid in the paddock and it'll also give you a great understanding across the whole paddock where you're up to in terms of your nutrients and different chemical properties. I like to recommend for a general soil test 0 to 10 centimetres and this will cover off our macro and our micronutrients, chemical properties, soil texture. However if we're looking for nitrogen in particular or sulphur some of these more mobile nutrients in our soils and you're probably looking at a zero to 60 and you're not going to cover off on all those general requirements you're just focusing on a, a nitrogen budget and so it depends on what we're trying to do what we're trying to achieve which will influence how deep in the profile we will take our soil sample from so in terms of how to go about taking a soil sample you don't have to have a soil trailer you don't have to have a pneumatic driver sitting on the back of your ute to do this what you can do even at home is using a simple shovel is mark out from the base zero to 10 centimetres, digging a small hole, making a straight edge on one of those holes and taking some of that face off and putting that in a bucket with a number of the other samples. Another option is using a soil push probe and you can find these at your local engineering shop. They can be made up pretty easily. And using that, you can mark out however deep you want the soil test to go and you take a number of different samples and you pour that out into the bucket once you've done all your various sampling across the paddock. Depending on your row spacing, so if you have a wider row spacing around that 13 inch all the way down to like 10 inches, then you probably want a ratio of, on that lower side, 10 samples from the inter row versus every sample you take from the line of crop last year. And if you're expanding that to a 13 inch or greater, then you probably want to go towards that 15 samples from the intero versus every sample that you take from the crop line from last year. So once we've got all our samples from our transect and we put them together in a bucket, we want to mix these around, but we want to minimise contact with our hands so we don't change any of the chemical properties in the soil. And this is why it's so important that we remove those outlying areas from our soil test or even soil test those separately because these outliers can influence this average of soil samples and give us a, a bad look at what's going on. Once we have our mix of soil in our bucket, we'll take out a, a subsample, so a small portion of it, put that in our bag and we'll seal it up, again trying to limit contact with our hands and also removing as much air from the bag as possible. And then we'll send that away in the mail 
to get tested and hopefully have some results in the next few weeks.